Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Wow, everybody's already in here. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> I'm used to um, waiting a couple of seconds, at least 10, before people start coming in. Uh, people are already here. Great. Um, good morning, everybody. This is um, another episode of Coffee with the Critters. This is a very special episode, and um, I guarantee you, I am not going to make it through without crying. <laughs> um, so it's been a hectic morning already. Um, I just I have Jeannie Gilligan in the lobby ready to join us. Um, we have a special announcement to make. Um, there will be sp special guests coming on. This live stream is not going to end at 10 o'clock. It's probably going to end at 10:30. Um, I have three other guests coming on with us around um, around 10 o'clock, so um, we have an important announcement to make. Um, but anyways, okay, so bear with me. Um, this is an episode I need to share, but I don't really want to be here. <laughs> I mean, I do. I have so much to share with you. Before I get started, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. Boy, my voice is cracking. <clears throat> Owner of the Animal Behavior Center. Sorry. <laughs> Can't wait to get Jeannie on here to redirect my attention. Um, we're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world um, how to empower the lives of their animals um, through using applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement. And we do that through our live streaming services. You can find out more about the work we do on our website at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, you can also reach me personally where I uh, respond to each of my emails myself. And that is Lara, L-A-R-A, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. All right. Um, I'm getting ready to bring Jeannie in. Um, and before I do... Um, this is a story, not necessarily about a bird. This is a story about an animal and his, what do I want to say, perseverance, um, spirit, um, his just will to live and learn. And uh, it, it's, it's a story of a relationship um, created that just skyrocketed and this is uh this is an <clears throat> excuse me special needs animal um and you always hear me say we don't learn from easy and i'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> excuse me and bring Jeannie in um and i'm gonna show some photos and videos not not videos i'm gonna show some photos of sam as we uh as i start talking uh with Jeannie. so here's Jeannie Gilligan. Let's get us side by side. Hey, Jeannie. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> One of my favorite people in the world. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. So Jeannie and her lovely husband, John, um, run a helping wing um, parrot rescue out of Blairstown. Is that correct? Yes. Blairstown, New Jersey. Blairstown, New Jersey. Um, and I know how to drive there now. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Jeannie, do you want to take just introduce yourself? How long has a helping wing been around? Um, and say exactly what you guys do. Uh, helping wing has been a nonprofit, and we've been around since two thousand and eight. So, last year we celebrated our ten year anniversary. Yay! Um, we started the rescue um, because I knew back in two thousand and five I was losing my job, and I decided I wasn't going to go back to work. <laughs> Um, basically what we do is rescue, rehab, and adopt back out. Um, we've always believed that every bird deserves a home. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where a bird is not adoptable or a bird is there just for life? Um, that's more of the bird's choice. Um, like the way we run the adoptions, as you know, is people come in. We look for that connection between the bird and the person. Um, we've had birds that have been here for five, six, seven years before they find their person. And when they do, you know it. Some yeah. birds get very complacent, though. Um, we do have an eclectus that we have kind of done a trial adoption and the bird's personality has changed. He doesn't like to be in another home. 
I get that. So that that does happen every once in a while. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Well, thank you. Um, now let's get started on Sam's story. Do you, um, I mean, our conversation last night, I always introduced Sam as a 23 year old, um, completely blind, fully flighted rescue parrot. Um, right. But as you and I were talking, and we'll get back into this, where we think Sam was actually a lot older than what he was. Um, I do think he was older than he was. Okay. Um, you could tell from just the, 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 the whole makeup of his genetics and stuff, how he was. Usually younger birds are a lot more energetic and stuff. Um, and Sam was just very, you know, I'm going to sit here in one or two spots. Um, when he did come in, it took us a couple days to, you know, really start evaluating him. And that's when we kind of noticed that, you know what, this bird doesn't see. If you put things in different spots, he had a hard time finding where they were. Um, and his eyes were also, I think if I remember, they're very bubbly. I have a picture. Um, um, keep talking. So, um, that's when we had taken him to the vet, which we do for all birds that come in. Um, he had ulcers on both eyes and he was completely blind. Um, we tried for a year to eliminate the ulcers without doing any kind of surgery, but it was a constant inflammation. Do you know anything about Sam's story before he came? I'm, I'm writing it because I lost a lot of my photos and videos this morning. <laughs> I accidentally deleted all of Sam's photos and videos permanently. So I pulled out my old iPhones and I've got them back. Um, so oh, I'm going to, one of the photos that I lost was a picture of Sam with his eyes um, when I met him when I was out there last July. Um, and I'm just going to make notes to to post these. Um, do you, what do you know about Sam before he came to a helping wing? Uh, Sam was owned by a single gentleman who had passed away and the family members had attempted to care for him. Um, you know, whether it got too much or they just really weren't interested. Um, you know, care is a big thing as we spoke about last night. Um, to me, cage size is important. And you even saw Sam was in an entirely too small a cage. Um, but he knew the cage, so it made it difficult on putting him in something different. Sure. And just to tell you something really quick, um, just from what I saw with Sam, you, you guys hear me say um, bigger is not necessarily better um, because you'll see photos. I've got a ton of photos to show you guys today as we get talking. Um, we gave Sam the whole room to explore if he wanted it. And he, he got a huge cage. Um, I don't know if I'm freezing. Um, we ended up getting him out and allowing him to walk around and do whatever he wanted, but he always chose to go back to that cage, and that was the cage he was in at a helping wing. Yes. Okay. Um, so go ahead. Um, kind of lost where we were talking because he froze. <laughs> yeah, I know we're freezing it up and I'm not sure why, but we can keep going because um, it'll kick back in and um, it'll, it'll play for the replay. Um, okay. We were talking um, about what's important, nutrition, and you said cage size and you were talking about Sam's cage. Um, yep. Uh, cage size is a very important. We always believe that if you're going to use a, a cage with the bird, bird should be able to open its wings inside his cage as well as have toys in there and enrichment. And we noticed that when Sam came in, there was a lot of, there was a lack of enrichment in the entire cage. Uh, the only toy that he really had was that bell. Mm. Um, that was kind of like his pacifier, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have pictures of that bell too. Uh, here we go. Yep. Yep. That was the bell. And that was a big symbol for Sam that, um, and we can talk about that bell. Um, he knew that bell. Well, did he come with that bell? He did. Okay. He did. Um, we had worked very slowly on putting other toys in the cage, but also not to block his ability to find his food and his water. 
Um, mm -hmm. He didn't venture out a lot with us. Um, you know, one thing that we always had to do because his eyes were constantly inflamed was twice a day, he got three different types of eye drops. Um, it's a little hard to teach a bird to, yeah, let me tilt your head and put drops in your eyes. So his experience with us was not always very positive. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, but you're doing what you do. You're arrested. Exactly. And we were exactly this last night. Um, you don't necessarily have the time to do the training because you're doing a lot of rescuing. Right. Our training um, from what we've learned from you is teaching the birds how to station, teaching the birds how to target train. Um, we've actually accomplished a lot, especially with the cockatoos on teach and um, getting screaming a lot less by doing that. Uh, foraging has played a big part in what we do here as well. And we try to teach that to the people that are coming in to adopt. Um, so, okay, you got Sam in, um, and I'm gonna start showing some pictures of like, the, and then I wanna start with how I met Sam. Um, you got Sam in, you were capturing him twice a day, putting eye drops in, um, yes. and your wonderful vet who was in touch with me um, there at the end. Um, yes. What? Go ahead. No, nope, go ahead. I was gonna say, I forgot her name. Uh, Sarah Marpet. Okay, Dr. Sarah Marpet. Um, so was she the one that suggested, why don't we, um, why don't we just remove his eyes since he can't see? Uh, well, what, we ha what we had talked about was because the, the medication was not taking away the inflammation. Um, so she had suggested, let's make an appointment um, at the eye specialty with Dr. Holbrook and go from there. And since Sam was healthy enough, we were like, all right, instead of doing both eyes at once, um, because we don't know if we we're gonna have any kind of problems with the surgery, let's do one eye at a time and give him a chance to heal. Um, and he healed beautifully after that first um, surgery. Yeah, <clears throat> let's see, I have photos of his surgery. Um, I'm writing it down now so we can, we can, we can post. Um, those are some of the photos I accidentally deleted this morning. Um, so I'm showing a photo here after, I can't believe, I can't remember what it was after, I think this is the second eye. Was That's the second eye, yep. So I came out um, to work with you and the staff last July. Correct. Yep. And that was after his first surgery. Yes, that's right, it was, because his first surgery was in May. Yes. Right? Um, and I, believe maybe I, that's one of the photos I raised too. I had a, I did. Um, I had a photo and I'll post it of how well that healed. So, okay, when I was out there, he must have already had one eye removed. Correct. Because I was there in July. Um, and then we were sitting there in your rescue working and I turned around and looked at Sam and, um, I remember asking about him and you said, oh, he's blind. He's been here for two years, he's blind. And then we went off and worked throughout the rescue for the rest of the day, ended up back in that same situation and I started inquiring about him. Um, and then um, I was staying with my girlfriend, Jeannie Underwood in New Jersey and I went home and well, I went back to her house and I all I could think of was Sam because you showed me when we came back in the second time I saw him, and I said, um, well, can you show me what he can do? And then what did you, you told me? Um, I'll tell that, you. He was very, he was very interactive. Um, he would whistle back and forth. He would chat back and forth and he would follow your voice. Um, Cause I know one of his favorite things that I told you was he liked to listen to Tony Bennett. Yes. He would sing along with him. <laughs> Yes, and I had pictures of um, some screenshots that I deleted um, of Tony Bennett and Patsy Cline. Um, 
So, and I remember standing there next to you and I took these pictures of you and I remember standing there next to you and you're like, he doesn't really move around much, but let me show you what he can do. And he was sitting there on that perch and you reached over and touched his food dish latch. And he's like, what? Boom, down. <laughs> right down to his food dish. So yep. when, when I saw that, Jeannie, what was going through my head was, that bird knows where his food dish is. I would love to see what else we can have him do. Um, so yeah, Tim says our guest is frozen. Yeah, I, I, I see Jeannie's frozen, but you get to stare at your lovely face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am frozen. I can see that too. <laughs> um, all right. So then from then, I went back to my girlfriend's house, fell asleep. Woke up the next morning and said, oh, no, I asked you before I left. What are the chances of Sam getting adopted? Uh, and I probably said no. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to adopt out a bird that is ha it's handicapped, but it's even harder to adopt out a bird to a home where they don't have the specialty. They, they don't know enough as to what to do with him. Yeah. So the next when you said next to nothing, um, his chances of getting adopted are extremely low next to nothing. So I remember I messaged you the next morning and I said, I'm filling out an application to adopt Sam. Um, and at that time I said, I don't care what he can and can't do. I want to work with this bird. I want to see what I can do for him. And if he does nothing else but stay in that cage for the rest of his life, so be it. That's his choice if that's what he wants. But I want to give him a home. Um, so then once my application was approved, you got back in touch with me saying that um, you and Dr. Marpet suggested we wait until the other eye is removed and recovered Correct. before I come back out and pick him up. Yep. Um, and I will tell you at the end of this live stream, I'm going to direct you someplace to watch some of these videos, but some of these videos I'm going to show um, that still need to be posted. Jeannie are of you record. Do you remember recording the first? Yes, I do. Yep. Um, I deleted that one too, but I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I came back out and um, I think it was Labor Day weekend. The, the, the yes, I think it was. I think it was that Friday. Yeah. So I drove back out, um, headed straight to New Jersey and uh, met you the next morning. And we got Sam out of his cage. And that's when I was like, wow, when I accidentally touched his bell. And don't let me forget because... I will ring it at the end. <laughs> it sits right here. Breathe. Um, I will ring it at the end of this live stream. But um, but the, the bell actually you used as a lure with him. It did get him used to going in and out of the cage. Yeah, because I noticed right there, um, we got him out of that cage out of the cage that morning for some reason. I can't remember what. And I was like, "Hey, do you mind?" Get in the carrier. <laughs> yeah, I said, "Do you mind if I try to interact with him?" Um, and I have the videos of getting him. He was on top of the cage and getting him back down onto that lanai is what I called it. Um, so, anyways, then we started. Um, I started the training immediately when we got in the car and I put him in my Jeep. Um, I wanted to at least make it halfway back home from New Jersey to Ohio with Sam. Um, and I knew I was going to give him a break by um, getting a hotel room and hanging out with him for a little bit. So <laughs> we hit the highway and every time. So I've got this blind bird in the seat next to me, seat belt into a carrier. And every time I would see a bump, I would say bump because here, and I remember I had this bell hanging up right next to him um, on the drive and he, he would grab it as long as we had smooth road. Um, 
But every single time I saw a bump coming, I would say bump and you would see him get ready. So he started learning that um, his carrier was going to jerk around a little bit. Um, so anyways, we made halfway home and we stayed, I believe it was in Clarion, Pennsylvania. Um, and I have photos and videos of this where I got him into the hotel room and just opened his carrier. And I immediately started working with him um, because I could tell his, when I would, whenever I would get close, I mean, imagine he, he can't see, he doesn't know where he is. This now he's in a quiet hotel room. And whenever I would get close to him, um, he would cock his head. Would blow on him. Yeah. Um, I started blowing on him, but what I did was I took his food bowl and it stayed outside the cage. It stayed with me and I started blowing on him. And every time I would blow, um, in my first encounter with him, he was very defensive. He was like lunging at everything. Anytime I got close, anytime I like hit the bed that he was sitting on. Um, but within probably an hour, I started seeing that behavior change because I would blow on him. Um, and I had pictures of that here too. I would blow on him creating a cue and then I would blow on him in the direction that I wanted him to lean towards. So he would lean towards me and I would stick that pecan right in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and that ended up being one of his favorite food reinforcers. Um, and this, I mean, that's where it started. And he just skyrocketed from there. Um, I know I kept in touch with you guys um, saying yep. hey, this is what Sam is starting to do. And I want to sh start showing you some photos of this is when I first brought him back. And Jeannie, I'm going to start telling his story here. Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about before he came here? Before we moved uh, No, I think we covered that. Okay. And jump in at any point, Jeannie, when because I'm going to start telling his story. So I brought him here um, <clears throat> the next afternoon. We timed it just right to get here around one o'clock. So the volunteers were here to help me get him out. We put him in the training room, which is separate from the bird room. This is where we bring the first place we bring any animal, whether it's a raptor, it's a lemur, it's a um, <clears throat> parrot because there's no other animals in the room and we just sit there and observe. And I think Sam was there for um, a week, um, but here he is. All of his favorite treats came from my hand. And this was the beginning work of me blowing in that direction. And as soon as he would start leaning and opening his mouth and he would open his mouth like he was getting ready to accept food, not opening his mouth like he was in a defensive manner. As soon as he would open his mouth, I would bridge and boom. And when that, but I would, I started with um, snap peas, really long ones to stay. <laughs> <away from my laughs> <fingers. laughs> because I needed to get an accurate read on <clears throat> what his behaviors meant. What does it look like when you're searching for something? What does it look like when something's scaring you? What does it look like when you're enjoying something? And so I had to pair all of, I had to watch for all of that. Um, so here he is starting to lean and I see Amy is on here from the Autism Model School. Amy, I have a picture of you and your interaction with him. Um, so it didn't take long. This is the first week he was here and I started being able to pet his head. How I did that is I shaped, paired and faded. What I did was I would put his bell next to him and I would rub his bell like up against his neck. And then um, I was like, he seemed to really like that and he would lean his feathers back. So something was rubbing him versus him having to rub on something. So what I started doing was sticking my finger in there at the same time <laughs> and rubbing his neck. And then once he really started accepting it, um, I would start moving in closer and touching his skin. And I remember rubbing the back of his neck and he was, <laughs> I hate to put labels on, but he was just like in, he was in heaven. He was just really leaning back. And we have some videos. If you remember those sounds that he used to make, it was like, <laughs> um, <laughs> did he talk a lot before 
at the at the rescue? Um, he did a lot of chatting, um, usually because we had other Amazons um, in the room, and he would do a lot of chatting with them. Um, but it was, you, you know, as we discovered, when he had his favorite songs on, he would hum along with them. And those songs were Tony Bennett? Mostly Tony Bennett, yes. Yeah. So because Sam is such a fan of Tony Bennett, um, Tony Bennett, let me tell you, before I came out there, you told me he likes Tony Bennett. And I was like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that is one person I can't stand to listen to. So I was just like, so I have my Dean Martin radio. I do love Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. I have my Dean Martin on Pandora. And before I came out there, I started adding some Tony Bennett songs. So I played that for him on the way on the drive from New Jersey to Ohio. And then every time Tony Bennett would come on here at the center, Sam would just come alive and come out of his cage. Um, so I became, I am now a fan of Tony Bennett and will be seeing him <laughs> it live in concert for the first time ever in my life in two weeks. And it is gonna be in honor of Sam. Um, but I did notice he really reacted to Patsy Cline too. When Patsy Cline would come on, his, do you know that when he talked to you, his throat would come out and he'd like, burr. Um, <laughs> and I have some photos coming up. Um, but yeah. And then here is, we always had that lanai open unless the dogs were out and running around. Um, but Sam, I don't want to say was out of his cage more than he was in, but he rested a lot inside his cage. He went back to his cage to rest. But the first place we started teaching him to come out was onto that lanai. Um, and like you and I were talking last night, Jeannie, here's some of the volunteers starting to interact with him. Um, let me see if I can get some of his photos a little bigger. Um, you and I were talking last night, Jeannie, um, and I said, whenever an animal comes here, I have a camera that focuses right on their cage, and I watch them throughout the day, day, and like I sleep with my phone next to me, I will turn on that camera and look at what that animal is doing at night. And one thing I noticed about Sam, since, um, since I put him in the bird room, was that he was not resting. This is a bird that didn't know what a full night's rest was, and I don't know how long, because I only knew him for six months. But this is what I saw on the camera. And it would get me so anxious in the middle of the night, I'm thinking, what else can I do for this bird? It looked like, the, it looked like Sam was uncomfortable, because he did not go, he could not rest more than 30 to 40 seconds without having to shift his weight. And I would watch him, he always slept with his head tucked, but I would watch him, he just, he would always like, kind of like ruffle his wings and um, his head and bury his head back in, but he was always shifting from left to right. And I was just like, please God, can you let this bird sleep? Um, did you Did you notice anything about that? Because I know, well, we, at that time, we didn't have the cameras on the birds. Um, you know, with him, uh, when he was in the rescue building, once lights are out, um, unless I'd hear something, I didn't go in there until morning. Um, but when he was in my kitchen, you know, I'd be going through here and there and stuff. Um, and he always seemed to be, you know, resting. So, you know, seeing what would happen in the middle of the night, I wouldn't see. Okay. And this is what we were talking about last night too, Jeannie. This is where it's so important for us to work together. Absolutely. Me, me you, the veterinarian forming this strong team. Um, when you have that teamwork, because this live stream is all about just doing better. Um, yep. and I have a great connection and working relationship with you. I've known you for several years now. We've seen each other several different places. We're going to see each other in two weeks at the, um, Absolutely. collaboration <laughs> for avian wellness. Um, or is it wellness or welfare? C4AW.org. Um, if you are taking care of birds, 
I highly suggest you go to that event. There is a powerhouse of people there. Um, but it's collaboration and teamwork and doing better for the animals in our care, no matter what the species. Um, but what I saw in Sam, I remember like after a week of watching him, I was like, this is not a healthy bird. And it didn't surprise me. And I think it didn't surprise you either. No, because as I said, he, I don't think he was a young bird. I don't think he was 23 years old. He didn't present himself as being a young, vibrant bird, a bird who's more, an older bird who's more complacent. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> um, I'll go through some more photos. And this is why we need to know how to do better because you and I were talking last night too, Jeannie. It's not uncommon to open up a bird cage and see a bowl full of seed. Correct. Um, a lot of times, like we were talking last night, people don't know better. Um, you know, you go to the store and what do they have? They have pictures of parrots, parakeets, macaws, everything on a bag of seed. So people think that that's what I should be feeding. And you and I both agreed last night we were talking about this. You said it first and I was like, yes, that has been on my mind. Um, we think a lot of Sam's condition, Sam ended up passing away of acute leukemia very fast. But the subtle signs were there. I just wasn't sure what I was looking at, but I could tell yep. something was going on. You and I agreed last night that um, a lot of this was probably due to nutrition. Yes. Um, when you have a bird on an all seed diet, some of them do very well, but what happens is it's like giving your kid candy every day and eventually your organs are gonna take the brunt of everything. Yep, yep. And something I saw in Sam was, this is just me, um, his bones hurt. Yes. What I saw in him was his bones hurt. Um, his hips hurt, his, his legs hurt. Um, so this is when Sam passed, next picture. Um, <laughs> If you want to change behavior, redirect it to another one. <laughs> and that is why Sam is now a permanent computer on my arm. That's immediately what I did. Very nice. Yeah. So I was just like, I felt a lot of anger once I put Sam down. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how that happened here shortly. Um, but I was like, what am, what am I angry at? I'm not angry at a person or is this really anger that I'm feeling? Cause I'm just like, I only had six months with Sam. Well, you start to wonder, is it something that you missed? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And we were talking last night. I kept, and I have not been able to let that go until last week. Cause I was just like, what else could I have done? Um, then you got to finally just let that go. And I was just like, it wasn't anger at anybody. Um, that older man was probably only doing what he knew. Um, exactly. Yep. So, you're Which, gonna, you know, also leads me to believe that he was a lot older than, than we think. Um, Cause if you think about it back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know, we didn't know any, you know, when I was in high school, my brother got him, got an Amazon and kept in a very small cage and you were fed a seed diet with very little enrichment. Um, and it's almost like, you know, okay, that's, you know, the guy got the cage. This was what he was told, you know, perfect size cage for him. Let me keep him in there. And here's the food that you feed. Yeah. And you kind of went from there. Yeah. And I can't be angry at anybody because I was once there. I didn't know better. I'm still learning how to be better and to do better um, with these animals. Um, I guess where I felt upset and I've been thinking about this for the last week is how he, you're going to see in these photos what Sam was able to do. And I guess I, uh, it's not anger, it's maybe misfortune and that Sam was robbed of home because 
the last six months of his life, um, I really empowered him. We've got our guests starting to show up in the lobby. Um, okay, so and feel free to jump in anywhere here because Jeannie, you are saying um, something very important for any animal. I don't care what the species is, teach it how to forage, teach it to search for it food, its food. Foraging provides empowerment, mental stimulation, physical stimulation, problem solving, um, quality of life. Absolutely. So I started teaching Sam to for forage the first week he was here. And I remember I stuck a snap pea inside of a Chinese finger trap and I gave it to him. I blew on him, bridged, handed it to him, and he went like this. He touched the Chinese finger trap and he was like, that. <laughs> I was like, okay, we've got some work to do. Um, so I shaped it and then he just became just a foraging king. And right before he passed away, um, I was shaping major complexities in his toys. Um, toys that even Suki, our fully sighted, flighted, blue fronted Amazon here would not attempt. But Sam was just knocking it dead. He was killing it. Um, here he is with one of his blocks. And we'll show you some videos. We're going to at the um, towards the middle of this live stream, we're going to get direct you to a place to watch some of Sam's videos. So this is Sam starting to come out of his cage. And what was super cool is I used to use his bell, the sound to lure him where I wanted him to go. Um, but then I paired it with my voice saying, there you go, Sam, keep coming, Sam, keep coming. And he would totally follow my voice. What was super cool about the training is, Pretty soon, I didn't have to use the bell anymore. There's some great videos out there where I would just, um, we guided him. We taught him how to, we called it going to school. Um, I guided him with my voice. I would walk in in the morning. I would say, good morning, Sam. And he'd like, Whoop! and he comes running out of his cage. And then it started the, hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Um, <laughs> So I taught him to station. This is on the outside of his cage. I taught him this within, I'd say, the first week and a half he was here. And we did it with the bell and my voice. Um, pretty soon he would abandon the bell. He would leave the bell to come towards me. Um, so that let me know I was on the right track of continuing in, in training. And then we started seeing him. We would all get so excited. Look, Sam's on his station. And he started going there by himself. <laughs> Um, so this is Sam on his station on the outside of his cage. Here he is. Um, this is him falling asleep on the outside of the cage up against his bell. And, this, and he's on his station. This is when I was telling you last night, I was thinking about giving him some kind of a shelf to sleep mm -hmm. on so he can, because I remember taking this photo, trying not to make any sound because I was like, he's sleeping peacefully. <laughs> um so this was a selfie I took. Um, there he is with his bell, but not touching it. And then um, Sam started getting all kinds of gifts. A lot were in the form of bells. Sam had at least 10 bells within the first two weeks he was here. <laughs> so I tried to introduce him to new bells. And then we moved him into the bird room. And I started introducing him to the other birds. And here he is searching when he'd heard when he heard something that he was interested in he'd put his head up like this and he'd sit there and he'd search for it and i was in the process of teaching sam there at the end to how to say i know you're there <laughs> what was really cool is he sat next to a radio and if i walked up if he was right here and i stood right in front of him he would know i was there because of the sound waves bouncing off my chest um, and he, he rang that bell a lot. I think for, um, Sam had some other things wrong, um, physical health, um, that I was telling you about last night. I took him to the vet and found out that one of his ears was totally closed. Skin was completely over top of it. The other ear, the hole was so absolutely tiny. He was no wonder he took that bell and just rang it in his ear. Um, which he did a lot. 
Uh, that's where we were talking last night of how important it is for people to vet their birds. Yes. And especially, um, you said, especially when they get older. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Older birds, I feel, should go to the bird, uh, go to the bird, go to the vet at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, you know, your younger birds, you can get every other year, but they really do need that initial vet visit. Um, get your blood work, get your gram stains. Um, you want to have a good baseline. So this way, if something is wrong and you run bloods, your vet can be like, hey, you know, this wasn't normal. This had changed from the couple of years ago. Um, but what I find doing adoptions is that people don't even have, an, have a vet. It doesn't necessarily have to be an avian vet. Um, if you have a really good vet, um, they should know who to reach out to. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people will do birds, can do, you know, your standard blood work, your fecal and everything, but interpreting, they might need a little help. Yeah. Um, and that's something we were talking about last night too. I hear a lot of people say, but I don't have an avian vet in my area. Maybe not, but you can have your vet consult with an avian vet. Absolutely. Um, you know, they will do that. We were talking, this is all about teamwork. Mm -hmm. um, well, the other thing I think with a vet also is that, um, you know, people always say, well, my bird's never been sick. And birds hide their illnesses until once you see those signs, that bird's been sick for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I will talk, I can talk about uh, what I saw in Sam. Um, so, Sam started um, getting introduced to the other birds. When I introduced him to Suki, oh my gosh, that is one thing I wish, I remember when I first brought him into the bird room, him and Suki were like, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you know Amazon, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but I was like, the potential here, maybe, maybe Sam moves to a big cage, like the big, we have 10 foot by 10 foot by nine foot cages here. Um, it's up to Sam if he wants to move in there, but this is Sam confidently walking out onto his lanai like he did every morning to start greeting people. Um, and, and he really enjoyed that. Um, he, he knew his cage. Yeah. He knew every inch of it. Yeah. So here's where I was like, we need to start moving you out to different areas. So I started Dow training. I started syringe training. I started target training. Um, we were training, go in and out of a crate. And even on the day I put him down, I asked him to come out of the cage and into the crate. And he did it so gracefully and peacefully and um, with as less stress as possible. Um, that's the importance of training your birds uh, Absolutely. <clears throat> because they're towards the end. I was so glad he was training. He had been trained to accept uh, a syringe. I was so glad he was trained to go into a crate. I was so glad he was recall trained to my voice because those, <clears throat> those all helped in those um, last hours of his life. So here he is. Um, coming out, um, training to step onto a dowel, and I would bridge and see his foot. Can you imagine the trust you would have to have because you don't know where the end, where the end of the world is, where you fall off? Yep. You have to trust the trainer. So if he trusts me, then I make sure I don't put him in a position where he doesn't have some type of choice. Um, so there I am reinforcing. Here's Amy from the Autism Model School. Um, the amount of people that would come over here that are not familiar with birds wanting to interact with Sam and how awesome of an encounter. So I was just telling Amy, blow. And then as soon as he opens up his mouth in that direction, bridge and insert. And then I slowly started getting those snap peas down to the, like, this <laughs> and then I started getting it to the point where I could hand it to him. And I think I did it like this and he would, and I did it the same every single time the pea would be right there. That was a way of introducing physical touch with me. So he would feel around with his tongue and feel the pea and grab it. <clears throat> 
Um, this is just a picture. Uh, there's so much I wanted for Sam. Um, I thought he could be on my shoulder. I would have gotten there. I'm sorry, this is just, I wish it wasn't so sensitive because it interferes with what I'm trying to say. And Sam had a great story. Um, I had no doubt I would be able to pick him up. We just didn't get there. Um, but he would for he started foraging on the outside of his cage. Um, some different things we did with him. This is the beginning stages of me teaching him to go to school. I was like, Sam needs to get out. Um, the Dow. It's a good thing he liked food. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody tells me their um, animal is food motivated, I was like, all right, this this animal is going to be doing jumping jacks in two weeks. <laughs> um, this is the beginning stages of me teaching Sam to go to school. Leave the lanai, come explore the top of your cage. And then we turned his cage up against the other side of the cage. And we have a video of this showing all of this up against the, ex the next side of the cage. And then I lured him with my voice up on top of the next cage. Um, so there he is. We turned his cage and we did it the same way every time um, in the beginning. Um, so then he started going up on that cage behind him and we started placing foraging toys up there and we called it going to school. Sam, it's time to go to school. And, um, he passed like a week to a week and a, about a week and a half after I got back from my vacation in Key West and Karen took a video of Sam on top of the cage next to him. And I was like, Sam went to school today. Um, and she's like, yeah. And I said, how did he go to school? Cause I haven't taught you how to lure him with your voice. And she goes, Oh, he came out and went up there all by himself. <laughs> um, so he knew where to go. He knew how to communicate with the people in the room to get to express to them what he wanted. Um, so there he is on top of the cage. Um, and then I would be right next to him on a ladder next to the top of the cage, guiding him with my voice over here, Sam, I'm over here, over here. And when he would hear my voice, he would make this vocalization um, kind of like the behavior I see in snow, our deaf and blind dog of comfort and trust. He'd be like, Burr! and he'd start following my voice. Um, so we started teaching him to forage on top of the cage and then we just let him go. Um, he would go up there. He would interact with Suki. And then I was just like, I don't know, maybe he and Suki share a cage someday. Uh, whatever <laughs> he wants and whatever Suki wants. Um, so there he is going to school and moving about all by himself. There he is with Suki in the background, listening to her. She would vocalize. She would go to that same. And we arranged a purchase so she could go next as close to Sam as possible when he was at school to um, see what that relationship looked like and what it could be. So here Did he you is. ever have them out at the same time? No, not that I wouldn't have. I would have eventually to try it because I just wanted to, I was still in the process of making sure I had a really good read on behavior. Yep. <clears throat> I think they would have, done fabulous together. Um, so here we're coming towards the, some of the end of the photos and um, our guests are going to be coming up here pretty soon. I wanted to touch him so bad, but touch to him, I had to be very careful not to go too far too fast because touch to him could have been a stressor. <clears throat> Which it was here with having to grab him twice a day. Yeah. Um, you know, he would hear my voice or Jody's voice and be like, oh, no, here they come again with the towel. Yeah. So um, and I knew that you told me what you guys were doing. So I was like, OK, and understandable. So I Absolutely. that helped me knowing what I had to counter condition and how I was going to do that. Um, <clears throat> 
So if I pushed Sam past his comfort level, I would have gotten nailed. He had, I don't think Sam ever bit me, but there were times where I pushed him too far and he let me know. He was like, boom, like that. And I was like, whoa, sorry. <laughs> um, but sometimes I need to make those mistakes to know not to do it again. Um, and those mistakes tell me, slow down. You're not there yet. Um, but this is Sam. Um, and he was, I was on the ladder while he was at school and I'm letting him and he would just sit there and touch. And at the same time, I was like, there you go, Sam. That's me. That's me, Sam. Um, but he would allow me to touch the back of his neck. This tell me that is a bird that does not enjoy being touched. Oh no, he does. Um, and that was one of the tough things, um, about his passing. Um, I think we're on some of our last slides here. Um, but here is, he ended up wanting to, to interact in our workshop we had in October. So um, our workshop in October was a lot of different professionals and people wanting to get more into the field of animal training. Um, there were a lot of dog trainers here and it was one of those dog trainers that was here during that workshop when they found out I was putting Sam down. Um, we got calls from all over the United States. We got emails from all over the United States because Sam gathered this following because I kept live streaming all the pro everything he could do. Um, I see more guests coming into the lobby. Um, one of these dog trainers said, you know, you don't know me very well, but I was in your October workshop. I saw that you're getting ready to put Sam down. Um, this bird really moved me and did, did a lot and I can't get him off of my mind. Can I come and see him before you put him down? And I seriously thought about it and I had to say no, because I only have three hours left with him. Um, so, but he touched so many people just seeing that spirit, you know, um, and I believe this is my last photo I have of him. Let me take a look. Um, yeah. um, so this is the last photo I have up here for you. Um, but I wanted to talk about before I left for Key West, I left for Key West for my annual vacation, the end of February. And I told you this yesterday and I was just telling somebody yesterday, I wrote, we write all our training goals and plans and progress on the windows. And I still have that writ written there. It says, Sam, apple cider vinegar training as soon as you get back. So I had forgotten about that, but before I left, if you can identify those small subtleties, I was just like, Sam, are you okay? Um, so the day I flew home is when he was going to school, Karen told me. Um, he came out and went to school all by himself that day. Um, I'll take these last couple minutes because our guests are all in the lobby now waiting. Um, trying to think, is there anything I'm leaving out? Um, Sam, boy, isn't is amazing. Some people might say, how can you be impacted so much by an animal you've only known six months? I tell you. Um, Sam got really sick. He started vomiting. I took him to the vet. You know how you get attached? Because you train them. When you train them, you know them. And when I found out how sick he was, I didn't find out right away. He went right into his crate. We went to the vet. Um, I was like, this is going to be very stressful for Sam. And by the way, check out his legs because I think there's something wrong with his legs. Um, and it came back diagnosed of acute leukemia, white blood cell count was off the chart. Dr. Myers called me on the phone. Um, and I ignored his call cause I didn't want to hear what he had to say because I didn't, I knew it wasn't good. So I listened to the call 
And he's like, Laura, it's not good. Sam has acute leukemia. You're not going to have him very long. And that's when I was just like, that cannot be, there needs to be, it has to be something else. Did he choke on something? Did he choke on a toy? But then I'm sitting there thinking, all these pieces of the puzzle start coming together. And like we said, those subtle signs. Yep. All those subtle signs where you and I agreed last night, this is a sick bird, you know? Um, but all the stuff he could do. And then I asked, I think Dr. Marpet sent me the, uh, the, the records. I was on the phone with you and Dr. Marpet and I was in correlation. I was talking to Dr. Myers and saying, what can we do? What can we do? Um, and I saw on his vet records, this is what just went boom, the final, because when I first started interacting with Sam, I was just like, somebody loved this bird. This bird has been touched. Somebody, he acts like he's been touched. Somebody loved him. I don't know how long ago. That was in my mind the whole time. So I was like, you've had a good life. Um, and then I got the vet records from Dr. Marpet, and it said, this bird has not been out of its cage in 16 years. Yeah. So I think that's what made me fall in love with him so much harder. Um, but I was just like, I was like, that's when like some anger started coming out with me. And I was like, 16 years? Do you mean he's been doing, he's only been doing these behaviors? Stop it. Well, that, that's also why his owners didn't know he was blind. Um, we don't know what caused him to go blind. Um, but that's also why we believe he's older than what we thought. Yeah. But I was like, that's when I started getting angry and I wasn't sure who I was angry with. But I took that anger and I put it somewhere, which we're getting ready to show you. Um, but I was like 16 years. This is just a matter of people not knowing how to do better. Um, there's no finger pointing here. I don't think this is a matter of it being anybody's fault. This is just a matter of not knowing more about nutrition, avian medicine, the foraging, um, the importance of training, um, so all those thoughts of me thinking this bird has been well loved and I was just like, then it transitioned to this bird had an awesome last six months of life. Um, being able to be shown what he can do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, before we bring on our guest, Jeannie, um, oh, I wanted to tell real quick, I woke up on it. We were trying everything we could, giving him medication. Um, I woke up on Tuesday morning and walked out there in my robe at 8 o'clock in the morning because I'd been watching him all night on the camera and looking down at the bottom of the cage and making sure he was not there. Um, I woke up Tuesday morning. I was like, all right, Sam. And he did give me a few last hi, Sam's in a ring of his bell, but the bell was slow and light. I went out and tried to give him his meds. <laughs> and he was becoming very hypersensitive. Uh, and he almost fell off his perch and was trying to catch and I sat there and I watched him some stumble a couple of times. And I reached over and I picked up my phone. And I called the vet. And I said, I need to put Sam down today. So my vet was closed <laughs> and I was like, that's not good. So I said, I reached out to my other vet and he said, <clears throat> if you can get him here between one and two, um, that will be great. And I would have had to drive him downtown Toledo and I'm sitting here looking at Sam and I was just like, is this how I want you to spend the last couple hours of your life? No. And I'm just like, with all the animal contacts out there I have, and I just sat there, I was like, thank Laura, thank. And I was like, the vet needs to come to the center and do this. 
I want this as truthful as possible. So I ended up reaching out to a friend who I will not name um, and a phenomenal vet, phenomenal, that made the last hours of his life so peaceful. Lindsay and I called him into his crate. He moved into the crate and I sat him on the kitchen table in the house. And I sat there with him and I did play some Tony Bennett for him. He got to listen to all the <laughs> he wanted. And there he rang his bell for the last time. But I want to tell you, the ending was so peaceful for him. And I told the vet when he walked in, I said, I'm going to warn you. Um, I'm going to cry uncontrollably. And I wanted those tears out of my eyes so I could see Sam. They put some drops in his nares to make him rest. And I asked him, I said, there's one wish. before he goes down completely. Will you hand him to me so I can hold him? Because I would have been able to do that eventually. So he went down, he started going down. We sat him back in his crate so he could rest. And I sat at the end of his crate and I was like, I'm over here, Sam, come here, Sam. And he was like, he was vocalizing and he was trying to walk with his wings and his legs and he came to the edge of the crate. Right, Zach? And I bet his beak. And then, boy, this does great for Sunday morning. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I pet his beak and then we pulled him back out of the crate to give the final medication. And he struggled a little bit, but it was so peaceful. And I'll tell you what, I can't thank my friend that was here for me enough and the vet that was here because they made it all about Sam and it was quiet. Everybody was quiet and nobody was talking. And they handed Sam to me in the towel. And I took him. I put him up against my towel. And I gave him a kiss. And there he passed. Um, very peacefully. And I slid my hands underneath the towel and I put his feet around my hands. And then we had something ready for him to go in. And I went in and placed him in there and covered him up with the Animal Behavior Center blanket. Um, and he was cremated. And they were able to save his leg band, which sits right there. Um, and I was able to, somebody very special had him cremated for me. Here's his ashes in this glass. That's beautiful. Bowl. Um, but with that being said, sorry, everybody in the lobby. I know I just ruined your makeup. <laughs> I'm watching everybody in the lobby. It was really important for me to tell you guys how he went. Cause I wanted you to know it was so peaceful and it went, it could not have gone more beautiful. Um, so Jeannie. I can't yes. thank you enough for allowing me to adopt Sam and have him in those final days of his life. Oh, I wouldn't want him to go any other place. Um, you're a very dear friend to me. We've become pretty close due to the work that we do. And I just want to say thank you. Um, I commend all your work. Um, you're a great person. And for any, but stay tuned because we're getting ready to bring on some guests. Um, you can reach Jeannie, John, and her whole staff of helpers and volunteers um, at a helpingwing.org. 
If you want to make any donations um, in the form of food, money, toys, um, so much. So thank you, Jeannie, and I will see you in two weeks. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Love you, and thanks for the great work you're doing. Uh, thanks. Love you, too. Um, I'm going to take Jeannie out. Oops. There we go. I'm going to take Jeannie out. Let's see. Did I just, okay, there's everybody. Um, whoops, I'm going to bring her back in. <laughs> 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 Let me take this out. I'm going to start. I'm going to announce something, and we're bringing people in. Here we go. I'm notifying our guests. All right, who isn't in? Here we go. It's the first time I've had four people on here at once. <laughs> so I want to welcome these four people in all our live stream viewers. I won't tell you how many are on so you guys don't get nervous. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for getting up this early with us. Um, I know some people here like to sleep in. Um, <laughs> so I... I'm going to announce something and I want to show some screenshots and in order to show some of these screenshots, I think, I don't know if I'm able to bring that photo in, but um, I am introducing you to our board members um, in Sam's honor. I, we have started a nonprofit um, pending IRS approval. And I want to give a huge shout out. Well, before I shout out to those, we're starting a nonprofit called um, the Sam I Can Foundation dot org. All right. And this is for all animals, not just birds. This is for all animals. And we have our mission statement. And I forgot to screen share, share, capture it to bring it on here. <laughs> but I can tell you, you can go right there and it's going to show you. Um, these are our board members. Um, I reached out to all three of them saying, this could have been prevented if we just knew how to do better. Um, and who do I want on a team of doing better? So I reached out to, I'll go in, I'll go in order um, myself as the president. Um, I'll go in order of who's on here. Dina Drenner, that is my sister. Um, she, in, I can ask you, I could tell some stuff about you, but I'll, I'll let you tell it yourself. We've got <laughs> Therese Copawoda, um, who I've known for several years. Dina is the secretary. Therese Copawoda is the vice president. And we have Karen Pratt. Everybody, a lot of people know Karen Pratt. She's the manager here at the Animal Behavior Center. Um, Karen Pratt is our treasurer. So I got in touch with these guys and said, I want to launch a nonprofit to teach people how to to prevent situations like this for people who want to know, want to do the right thing. Um, so we started the Sam I Can Foundation. Um, I remember, Therese, when I asked you, I was in Chicago um, in March, and I said, don't answer me. Um, just think about it. Would you like to be on the board of a nonprofit that helps? Um, I want to help um, donate money towards transporting animals, um, understanding veterinary care, um, whatever we have to do to get them places like a helping wing. Um, so Therese, do you want to say, I know I said, don't think about it or don't, don't answer. Just think about it. Uh, I didn't really have to think about it. <laughs> I mean, just, just knowing your work and how passionate you are about what you do and like I told you, I have to really believe in something to be involved in it. And I've had, I've had a couple other um, requests to be involved with things like this, but um, similar, not, not quite the same. And I've, I've turned them down, but there was no question when you asked me, because this is something that, that is just your vision is just amazing. And it's something that we need to do. So I, I, I couldn't say no. Yeah. You called me back in like two hours. And you're like, all right, I thought about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And Therese, um, you have a history of working with dogs. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I've, I've had dogs all my life. I was a, um, I trained dogs when I was a kid. I also have been uh, worked in the pet industry for God, 18 years. Jeez, long time. Um, first as a pet sitter and then uh, evolved to doing social media for uh, pet people. But yeah, dogs have, you know, always been in my life. Cats, um, soon to be a bird in my life again. <laughs> Haven't had a bird since I was a kid. So, um, and then also I have been on the board for the Indy Canine Cancer Walk. And we, we work to raise money for cancer research for not just dogs, but for other companion animals as well. So um, animal welfare and, you know, health and well-being is really something that I'm pretty, pretty passionate about. Good. So I like, like the wide variety we have in the interest of the board members. Karen, I'm going to take you out real quick, just because stick you back in the lobby because it's not going to allow me to show the website. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Can you um, let me know if it's the center's on arm? Sandy's waiting to come in. Oh, sorry. That's um, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not a worry. Hang on. Um, so here I wanted to say this is our website. Um, the Sam I Can Foundation, not the Sam I Can Foundation dot org, um, and you will see uh, information starting to be put on there. We're gonna, it's in the works, um, and I want to give a huge shout out to everybody that helped put this together. Our attorney James White, um, our bank Waterford Bank, um, our Laura Dosh over at Waterford Bank. When they found out what had happened to Sam, they were jumping through hoops to try to um, help us get this put together as soon as possible. Um, so there is our website. We also have a Facebook page, um, which we're starting to post videos on now. And um, I want to thank Julie, who I'm not allowed to say her last name because she's donating all of her um She's designing our logo. So, Sandy, yes, the, the center is on. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bring Karen back in, but I want to introduce you to Dina Drenner, my sister. Um, she accepted being a board member, and thank you for getting up this early, Dina, <laughs> to be able to come on here. Um, so Dina doesn't have – Dina, why did you agree to be on as a board member? Well, because I have such a great passion for animals. You know me, I'm the one that will drive around the neighborhood a hundred times just to get that stray dog in my car. But um, no, I love everything that it stands for and all the good it's going to be able to do. Um, I didn't really get to know Sam, but the whole meaning behind it is an honor that you asked me to be on the board. Um, really excited to see everything that we're going to be able to do. Yeah. You know, not just birds, it'll be whatever. And to be able to help people and animals means a lot. Yeah, and you have a history of, I mean, we were just talking on the phone for two hours last night while I should have been working on this live stream. <laughs> but we were talking about your support of Death Dog Rock. Yeah, that means a lot because it takes a certain somebody to go out there and help these other animals when other people think that they're, there's something wrong, they're broken. They're not broken. They're they don't disposable, yeah. any other way. Give them a chance. Yeah. Um, and we were talking last night, too, about, you know, the Sam I Can Foundation can help organizations such as a Helping Wing, Deaf Dogs Rock. Um, we need this animal moved from here to there, ASAP. Um, all these different organizations or individuals or large situations, like I'm working with you guys right now behind the scenes on a, a situation that's been happening over the past week. Um so yeah, we can help those organizations. Um, and then we have our treasurer, Karen Pratt. And you agreed, Karen, to come on board. <laughs> like right away. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want you to feel obligated that you had to come on board. Why did you why did you come on board as a board member? Oh my gosh. I mean, Lara, you know, I feel like you are an awesome business person. 
And I'm like so impressed with your passion, with everything you do. I've learned so much from you. And I thought, why not? This is like such a good cause. Sam was like my sweetheart. And I didn't even have that much contact with him because, as you know, I work more from home. And um, I mean, it just brightened my day every time I walked into the center and I'm, hi, Sam. You know, it was just like, I love that bird. Oh, I think God. everybody did. He was an amazing bird. Um, but he he just captured my heart. And it's like so many things could have gone wrong, but they all went so right with him. And it just made me feel good. And I wish and I hope that through our foundation, we can, you know, grow this knowledge that people need and, you know, get them to understand how to care for animals, whether bird, wildlife, whatever. Um, I just think we're going to do amazing things with this foundation. And I couldn't be more honored to be asked to be on the board. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. And you, I mean, all three of you have already put in a lot of work into the Sam I Can Foundation um, in the forms of it's all – everybody's volunteering their time. This is all volunteering time. Um, so we took on, well, we took on our first case, which, which, which impressed me. Um, and it wasn't, that's what got me moving on the same I can foundation. Cause I posted, um, about tequila, tequila, the mutilating happened to be a parrot cockatoo needed move from North Carolina to Michigan ASAP. And we had the transport, the, we had the transport put together, um, what, in 45 minutes? I can't remember, Dina, I know you said you were following all that online. Yeah. yeah. Um, in 45 minutes and the bird was moved with, was it 24 hours? Yeah. And it's flourishing. Um, and a lot of people donated to that and helped that. Um, so that those monies, those that money collected was what we put into the Sam. Well, it helped get transported and pay some vet bills. Um, we only asked five hundred dollars for the gas money, but yet people continued to donate. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is keeps going. Um, so we've used that money to help pay some vet bills and um, and to put together the, the foundation. So yeah, Shelly Hotstetler has the bird and she's the one that called me. She called me and I, she said, I need help. And I was standing right here in my robe and I jumped on the computer, put this together, boom, done. So I was like, how can we do that again <laughs> and do it for a wide, wide variety of animals? And the same I can foundation is how we do that. Hey, Lara. Um, yeah. I want to um, tell you something. Remember when we gave you the uh, painting? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was part one. <laughs> I have part two. Do you guys know about this? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> this here, I don't know whether you can see this, but can you see it? No. <laughs> okay. see my big head. This is a fake check, okay, that I printed up, and it's a donation to the Sam I Can Foundation for $525. Nice. Awesome. So we are on our way. Ah, uh, thank you. I mean, that's a nice surprise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who, well, it's not who do I thank, it's who do all four of us thank. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great. Yeah, because thank you so much. The Sam yeah. I Can Foundation is not me. It's all four of us. Um, 
and it's all of you. It's everybody who helps us share, um, helps us get our mission out there. And obviously donations are great. Um, Cause that's how we keep moving and that's going to put forward into motion, um, which case we choose, which we're going to jump on board and help get animals where they need to be in Sam's honor. Right. And just, just so you know that um, those monies that was collected was again, part of the whole gift from all those people on the first list that we gave you. And there was a name omitted. Edie Edmonds is also on that list. So awesome. Okay. That's great. So I want to tell you. First of all, I want to tell you all happy Mother's Day. Thank happy you. Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah. So I said the only way I will ring this bell is when we get a major donation or when we complete a case, a transport or whatever we have to do. Um, so I want to ring this bell in honor of all of our followers. Hey, you're making me cry. Are you? <laughs> I don't ring this bell. Um, <laughs> for all of our followers, for our mission, for Sam and for all those that, for the check for everything you guys are doing. Ready? What a familiar sound. Um, but if it wasn't for Sam, if it wasn't for Sam, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing right now and look at what a difference we're going to make through the same I can foundation and what we're doing. Right. Um, I wanted to share, if you need to reach us, um, you, nope. Yeah. Well, that's our website. Um, if you want to email us, I got to give credit to Therese for this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, as it you know, sense. <laughs> what's that? It made sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you know, Sam always said, hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Um, so Therese formed our email address. Hi, Sam at samicanfoundation.org. Um, so we're going to have some fundraisers. We're putting together some fundraisers. Um, we got some ideas. We have some ideas for here on site. We have some ideas for um, the... Uh, online um, page. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> we lost Laura. We lost Laura. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have seen I didn't even know. I was like, hey, who disappeared? And it was you guys who <laughs> told me. <laughs> um, we're going to be doing, um, watch our Facebook page very closely. The, one of the major missions behind the Sam I Can Foundation is to educate through stories. We're going to pick certain cases. Some of us may go there. We're going to live stream. We're going to keep you up to date. This is the situation these animals are in. This is what needed. what's needed. We're moving these animals or we're getting these animals the care that they need. We're going to be heavily focused on live streams, heavily focused on updates, just like um, – Oh, and you can pay attention to our website and follow each individual case. What we're doing is we want to put each case into a story to teach via education along the way. And um, it, this is very non-judgmental, so nobody has to feel guilty for needing to um, surrender an animal or move. Um, accidents happen. I know they happen every day. So don't feel hesitant to reach out to us. Okay. Anything else we wanted to say? 
Um, there was a suggestion, and I I love this. Um, Julie, and I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Botch, maybe. It's Z V. Zavach. Oh, Julie oh. Zavach. I know her. <laughs> okay. Well, she suggested possibly doing a T-shirt. Yeah. So Get my can T-shirt. So we we could probably do that. Yeah, we, once we get a logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once we get a logo. Um, we, um, and Dina, we were talking about this, different ideas, and we were talking about this the other day, asking you guys for ideas for how we can raise funds. How can we raise money? We were talking about, Dina, you've been looking into, like, some tumblers and cantinas. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. Julie suggested T-shirts. Karen suggested uh, a live silent auction. Mm -hmm. um, live stream. Yeah, live streams, that, that would be fun. Yeah, um, this could be a lot of fun where people donate things for us to auction off um, to help certain cases. I have something here that could go into that auction, but it's going to be very hard for me to part with. So I need to give that some more thought. Um, yeah. So if you have ideas, let us know. Julie says we can make the ideas roll. Um, we can even live stream with you and take us because there's an idea I have in my mind. Um, yeah. Anything else we wanted to talk about? Oh, Dina just disappeared. She just accidentally took herself off. <laughs> so while she's off, um, I'm going to take advantage of being able to show you the Facebook page, the Sam I Cam Foundation. Um, and, oh, there's our website, and that is our mission, and it's too small. I can't show you. I can't read it. <laughs> Dina's in the lobby. She's sideways, and you just hear her go, <laughs> there she is um so dina we just took advantage of while you were off being able to show our website our mission and our facebook page we want our facebook page to be very active um to keep you in the loop what's going on um what we're doing and how we're doing it so we still have 100 people on live stream continuing to follow us. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, uh, Laura. What, yeah. You said you couldn't read the mission. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Okay. So our mission is that we lead by example in our love for animals, utilizing resources for current and future care. We provide initiative, guidance, and appropriate assistance for animals in need. We tell the stories of each situation with the opportunity for education and to follow the progress and journey of the animal, caretaker, or organization. We strive to handle each situation professionally and with loving care, knowing not to judge walking in another's shoes. Boy, that sounds really good read out loud. Doesn't it? It does. Yeah. yeah. That took a lot of work for us to put that together. <laughs> In a lot of back and forth with the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it really captured what we're about because like you said, no judgment, but we, our focus is on, on helping animals and helping people, you know, figure out how to do better. Yeah. And, and create the education through the story. Mm -hmm. um, so with each case we take on, um, we'll keep it prog progressing on the Facebook page with each case we finish, um, and if there may never be a finish, we will post that on the website. Um, so yeah, and we'll start that with tequila. Tequila is doing phenomenal. Feathers are growing back, mutilation, um, her, her, her skin is starting to grow back in. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any ideas, if you wanna reach out to us, Head on over to the Facebook page. That's where I'm heading as soon as this is over. Um, follow it. Um, comment. Give us suggestions. Um, you can also reach us on our website, samicanfoundation.org, and reach us via email. Hi, Sam. At samicanfoundation.org. So good. There was something I was going to say. 
Did we have the uh, donation button actually working now? Yes, people can feel free to donate. <laughs> oh, something else we thought about was even having, if people want to donate on a monthly basis, that was Karen's idea. Mm -hmm. um, you can sign up to donate so much money a month, whether it's $1.99 or $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. 100% <laughs> of proceeds go to the Sam I Can Foundation and all the animals that it helps, the organization itself. None of us are getting paid. Um, we are 100% volunteers. Okay. Um, anybody want to say anything else? I'd like to say Sam's story lives on. And he'll be with us in spirit as long as Sam I can is around. Yeah. Which will be a long time. And I'm, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what we can do and what difference we can make. And not just us, but everybody, like you were talking about earlier, everybody who follows the foundation and helps support the foundation. It's all of us working together. All yep. of us. Yep. It takes a village. <laughs> and Dina's friend reached out to me the other day. This totally shocked me. Um, Dina's friend, re I don't want to say her name because she didn't give me it allow me to say it on but she's like Laura I'm having a birthday party and I want to raise money for the Sam I Can Foundation will you be in town and I said you name the date I'm going to be in town I will <laughs> rearrange my travel schedule around that date so that was nice to hear um, so long live Sam there we go our sweet Sam yep Okay, um, somebody just texted me saying that the link is not working. What uh -oh. do you mean? Uh -oh. the, the donation link? Mm. It's Shelly's texting page, The Facebook page, they're saying. Oh. The Facebook page link is not working. Oh, did we make that public? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been me. <laughs> Let me check. Uh, oh, you know like, what? Quentin just had a great idea. Register what? with Amazon, and when people buy off Amazon, they can donate to the foundation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a good idea. We can totally do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Thanks, Quentin. <laughs> Thanks, Quentin. So it sounds like the Facebook page is not working. Um, that would have been me. Is it something I need it's to do? Working? I can do it. Well, we can start working on it as soon as we get off of here. Because um, I don't want to keep everybody. I want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Thanks for joining this live stream. Um, I'll, most of the viewers are still on with us an hour and 33 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, and let's see what happens next. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye.